Well, I think it was a bad it was a bad call on the part of Urban Meyer. Now, you know, me personally, I mean, I don't know if cancer culture applies here or whatever, but I, I'm of the mindset that this is the land of second chances. And, you know, when I initially heard of the hire of Chris Doyle, I sided with Urban Meyer from this perspective. He said it was vetted. I was I assumed that he had spoken to players. Um, as well as folks within the organization before making the decision and that it wasn't a uni unilateral decision on his part and that everybody was on board. And that's really the way that I took it and I left it at that. Little did I know that uh, Urban Meyer hadn't consulted with players, hadn't really talked to anybody. He swore that he vetted Chris Doyle, uh, but clearly, uh, you know, the, the facts show otherwise. The reality of the situation is that to, to have this guy coming out of Iowa, um, known for racist remarks and bullying and, belittl and belittling players. That's bad enough. But when you take into account Urban Meyer's history, particularly as it pertained to uh, Zach Smith, or how the former Ohio State receivers coach, he had hired three years uh, after uh, uh, Zach Smith got, you know, got in trouble on domestic violence charges and stuff like that. Uh, Urban Meyer has dropped the ball, and and that was that, you know, that was years ago. And so to come into the new job. And to do it again, and this is one of your first hires, it makes Urban Meyer look very, look very, very bad. It makes him come across as very uh, desensitized or insensitive uh, to the times that we're living in and what's been going on. And more importantly, I think he can expect to be confronted by some players who'd want an explanation as to why he would think that it was okay to make that decision. And, and just as an aside, I, I just want to say this. I'm one of those guys who believes if you're not in jail, OK, if you're not incarcerated, you know, you should be working for somebody because if you ain't working for somebody, then that means we got to support you as citizens paying our taxes and stuff like that. I support everybody being employed. So I, I, I'm never happy about folks being unemployed because to me, that's just weight on society as a whole. Having said all of that. When you're in positions of leadership and you're a leader of men and you have a plethora of men that you're overseeing um, and to some degree you're going to have to answer to as well, even though you're the boss, you've got to sensitize yourself to a situation well enough to know what decisions you should and should not make. And Urban Meyer, uh, him doing this shows us that the very things that he's apologized for in the past in terms of making bad judgment calls and what have you, he still isn't finished making those highly questionable calls. And that's the unfortunate part of all of this. Let's talk about cancel culture, Stephen A. I am against it if it's permanent. If, it, if the cancellation means you're permanently disqualified from participating in American life, in your chosen profession, even at the highest levels, because you've made a mistake, I'm against that. However, and I agree with you, second chances and then some. What is the point? To punish? Just to punish? Yeah. No, it's to make people better, to make the world better, right? Yeah. But before you get the second chance, I think you need to be held accountable. You need to take accountability for your behavior. You need to take steps to correct it, and then you can move on. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen, let's, let's take Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer comes out at the press conference and says, or, or makes the statement, that this was thoroughly vetted, right? He vetted it, and the, and the players are going to have to trust me. Hold on a second. He also talked about transparency. Okay, well, coach, in, in, in the, the, uh, to the issue of transparency, what was the vetting process like? What questions did you ask him? Why are you now satisfied? What did he tell you? That can't be opaque. You know, like, you can't say it's transparent on the one hand and then it's not transparent on the other. The, be, because when the players just have to trust you, what you're saying is, in my judgment, it's not actually transparent, in my judgment, everything's okay now. I haven't heard accountability taken, and I don't know it, what Urban Meyer's judgment is based on. What were the steps, what were the vetting steps actually taken? So when he tells his players, you'll just have to trust me, that is the opposite of transparency. And because I haven't heard an accountability taken, I don't know that the, that, that in, the subject in question is ready to have the second chance. Furthermore, Stephen A., you brought up, uh, I believe you, you touched on Zach Smith, right? Mm -hmm. um, is Urban Meyer's especially recent history indicative of a head coach or an administrator who makes sound decisions in this department? It doesn't seem to me it is. Well, it seems to me that contradicts his very point. So, so just to conclude my point, I am also against cancel culture if it means you are permanently canceled, with few exceptions. 
However, there must be responsibility taken first. I didn't see that here. I agree with you. I will say this, too. If we want to get into the mind, the psyche of a Urban Meyer, based specifically on his words in terms of you're going to have to trust me, Urban Meyer, who I believe to be a brilliant football coach, is clearly one of those people. Last time we saw him, he was winning 90% of his games at Ohio State, won you know, na- you know, a couple national championships, won national championship at Florida. We know what he brings to the table as a coach. He's clearly one of those people, I believe, when he said, you have to trust me. In other words, he's saying, I'm a winner. I win. Trust me that the things that I'm doing will lead to us winning. Right. And obviously there are people that are going to have a problem with that because they're like, winning isn't everything. Well, to a lot of football coaches, as Lombardi would say, yeah, it's the only thing. And certainly thing. to Urban so, Meyer. You know what I'm saying? And so, and so, and so that, 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 that would explain things. Which brings me to Trent Baalke. Let's not let him off the hook. He is the general manager of the Jacksonville Jaguars. You do have some say within that organization. You're not a novice at this. You used to be in San Francisco in pro personnel, and then you were the GM. You've been around. And so for you to be around and for this to happen under your watch as well, let's under, because the players can only say but so much. Yeah, they can say it, but you know this is not basketball. It's football. And so they probably, even though some would speak up, for the most part, dudes will get scared. They'll end up losing their jobs eventually the second you snap a finger. I want to touch so on that. So you got to look at executives that are working in concert with Urban Meyer. You certainly had the power to say something. Where the hell were you? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.